Hello everyone, it's Sunday morning and I decided to start working on my amp. So I have breakfast because generally one gets rather irritable if one doesn't eat. And once I get started on something I find it rather hard to stop. But anyhow, just um, one thing I'm showing you here is how I've got the sockets and the um, potentiometers mounted on the outside. For one thing it's um, rather crowded in that chassis so this makes it easier to wire things up. So you can see there's a tone control two volume controls and all the inputs this will make it easy to mount on the input uh, on the inside and wire it up um, one thing I neglected to mention in the last video I've um, got these little cliff jacks here which are for the speaker outputs now one thing I did do is wire them up high watt style so pretty much if there's no speaker connected it's short circuit and regardless of which one you plug the speaker into it'll open it up um, this is, well, pretty much the original design as you can see over here. you got like your main speaker jack and the external speaker jack. And the last thing you want to do is plug into the external speaker jack because that means there'll be a dead short over there. Um, really bad. And um, I just don't want to have to think about having to plug into a specific jack. So with this method, um, doesn't matter which one you plug into. Also, um, having a dead short when it's un when there's nothing plugged into it, it's sort of a safety feature because the uh, valve amplifier um, will have a better chance of surviving if there's a dead short rather than nothing on there. So anyway, I'm going to continue and um, yeah, see in a tick. Alright, I put all the leads on the turret board. This probably explains why it looks like a centipede. Now these are all going to go to the pots and the valve sockets and whatnot. The underside's wired up. I uh, also added a little addition, where are we? You can probably see that little, what is it? 270k, yep, 270k resistor lying around there. That's actually a bleed resistor for when I turn off the power, that those capacitors don't hold charge, they all discharge into ground. I figured it's probably safe in case I want to work on it. Put a bit more work into the chassis. It's um, really cramped. I don't know how the Fender employees did this in the 50s. I personally, now that I think about it, wouldn't exactly want to do that. I want to be that. Unless I'm very keen on swearing, which, um, judging by, I don't know, the amount of times I cut the back of my hand, I've been swearing a fair bit. Also, the ground switch, I'm going to wire that already started. If you can sort of see there. Wiring that as a standby, although a standby is not nece necessary, I, um, I figured it's better than having it sitting there doing nothing. Um, back in the 50s, um, the ground switch would switch a capacitor either um, to um, was it neutral or active for a capacitor to ground. Now it's not the 50s anymore, and I'm not a stupid idiot. I don't want that thing to go short circuit and then. Um, Electrocute me, so I'm playing it smart. Anyway, next scene you should see this thing in the chassis if everything goes to plan. Okay, you can see there I've um, soldered in the first preamp tube, valve even. Um, you can sort of see the approach I'm taking. I've screwed the turret board in there. I've put both, well, I've only put three screws except for that one there. Um, after dropping the F bomb about four times in a row, I figured. It's not worth the frustration, it'll probably not gonna hurt not having it there. So anyhow, I'm gonna do the rest. See how I go. Okay, the rear is all wired up, all the valve sockets, the speaker output, see the six L six sorry, six V six output, and the rectifier, one thing that I have done is stick a little piece of tag strip. You can see it's marked 8 and 16. Uh, it doesn't have a speaker and speed impedance switcher so I'm using this instead. It's a bit, I don't know, it's a bit how's it going but it does the job. As you can see I've got it tapped to 16 ohms at the moment considering I've got a quad box rated at 16 ohms. Yeah, now to do the front. Alright, here's the front done. Uh, you can see it's a bit messy. Turn it upside down. Actually, it could be worse. But it's not too bad. 
I had to flip around the, the sockets on the bottom because this little tab here was hitting the turrets because of their height but not to worry, check this out just going to pop that in there see, no contact at all with the turrets and I have to worry about electri electrocution the other one safe, see, see, see I'm just going to whip that out again Maybe I won't. This is one of the joys of having only one hand. Bit of a far shot. Here's the front. Smeared with my sweaty fingerprints. I'm just going to give that a bit of a buff before I put it in. Now I'm just going to sanity check it. Let's see if I can do it from here. There we go. That's better. Completed what I began just before. Um, I'm going to sanity check it. Just buzz it out with the um, continuity meter. Over there. Then stick in a 240 volt um, power cord, plug it in, and hope it doesn't go up in smoke. Well, that's what the sanity check is for, anyway. Let's just make sure everything's hunky dory, shall we? Alright, see you soon. Okay, the power lead is wired in, just in time for a plane foot to be going above my head. Um, what I did, I did it slightly different to what was actually said in the instructions. I went from um, active to the power switch to the fuse then to the transformer. Um, in the original it was actually um, active to the power switch to the transformer and the fuse was in the neutral line. Um, that's a bit stupid if you ask me because the last thing you want to do is break the neutral line anyway. Um, so yeah, I did it the modern safe way because, like I said, I don't want to be electrocuted while using this thing. So, next thing, I'm going to power it up without any valves in it and see if I get expected results. Here we go. Alright, there it is. Finished. Did a few sanity checks and um, voltages seem alright, minus the valves. Here it is, fully decked out. 5Y3GT, a couple of 6V, let's start that in just in case it wasn't even camera. 5Y3GT, a couple of 6V6GTs, 12AX7, 12AY7, mains. No matter how many amps I fix or how many I build, this is always the part that gets me, pardon my language, shit scared. Here we go, turning it on now. And uh, let's have a look. Uh, well, lights on. Right, there you are. Dial lights on. Valves are glowing. Can't see it, there's too much light. I say everything's warmed up. Let's turn on B. Plus and hope to hell this thing doesn't go up in smoke well hear that that can't be good turning it off shit eh Okay, that crackle sound seemed to have disappeared. Oh, it must have been just the thing heating up and turning on, cause we have sound. So that's a bonus. Things work. Time to give it a proper test. Yes. Alright, I had a bit of a thrash on this thing. Um, tried both my Les Paul with P90s and my 57 Gretsch Duojet reissue. And although in my previous video I did say I'm going to test it out with various different guitars so you can have an idea of what the sound is like. Sorry, I'm going to have to resort to just playing this because, well, it's a very, very magic sounding amp. Um, clean? Clean? No? No bloody way. No, this is not a clean amp. Uh, it may be a Fender design, but it is not clean by any stretch of the imagination. When it says clean, it sounds a bit, eh, you know, but... um has no negative feedback on the thing, no negative feedback at all, so the th it breaks up really really early, it's really crunchy, really really bloody quick. So without further ado I'm just going to shut the hell up, 
show you the settings. I'm going into the bright channel, into the high gain input. Uh, the volume is about 7-ish uh, on the bright channel, about 4.5 on the normal channel. Tone is all the way up. Um, dual light is blinding. Uh, you can see my... Um, uh, you can't even, I can't even give myself the finger in this thing, but anyway. Uh, I did say I was going to shut up. So, without further ado, I'm going to put this camera down. So you can see the amp. You may see my legs. I may obscure the shot. I may even wave and say hello. Yeah. But I'm going to pick up the guitar. Plug the sucker in. That's sucker with an S, so don't accuse me of swearing. I just had a plectrum in my mouth, so it sort of obscured my words. Plug the sucker in. I'm on the bridge pickup. Turn it on. Click, click, click. There it is with the um, pickup just turned up slightly, but... That's not what we're here for. We want to hear it turned up all the way. even though I stuffed up on the very last chord but you know it's uh, it's very very high game it's um it's good it's really good bloody loud for about 12 to 15 watts I'm sure the neighbors hate me by now but you probably hate me even more because I'm not going to shut up so I'm just going to end this video right now bye bye <laughs>